Hi everyone, I am Nadia Padiguana, also known as Coach Nadia or Dr. Nadia, and I've been pulling around and I got from you guys that you're really interested in uh, listening to me do some videos off of some of the blog posts that I have written in the past. So none of these are new, none of this information is new, all of it is basically on my website drnadia.com slash blog. And there's quite a few topics that I'd like to talk to you guys about, but I'm going to start talking to you today about dairy because in my poll on my Instagram page, I got that you're all really interested in uh, hearing me talk about dairy. So basically what I'm going to do for you, since I know you're all very busy people and you rather watch videos than read, I'm actually going to summarize and read parts of my blog post to you on dairy. And I'm also going to give you some resources. So when I talk to you about dairy, I often joke that don't kill the messenger. Some of the information that I'm going to share with you, I got from the most reputable sources, particularly I reference a few articles by Megan and Dr. Fung, Megan Ramos and Dr. Jason Fung, on why dairy, uh, in some, particularly in more insulin resistant people, meaning people that have higher blood sugars, people that have more fatty liver, people that are more prone to obesity and gaining weight, why is dairy um, more fattening, quote unquote, in uh, certain individuals than it is in others? And particularly, why do some of us have a much higher insulin response? So we're always talking about insulin, I'll always say that as your coach, I'll remind you all the time, keep your eye on the ball. Most of us that follow um, the fasting method um, program or that listen to me or that have read my book, The PCOS Plan, most of the people that I work with and have in the last 20 years have a hyperinsulinemia, insulin resistance, and different expressions of insulin resistance and metabolic syndrome. And that's why we're here. So if we're here, to lower insulin, right? We got to keep our eye on the ball, right? The problem is insulin. This is what's making you gain more weight. This is what's making your blood sugars higher and uh, developing prediabetes, diabetes, fatty liver, and some of the reproductive conditions and concerns that you may be dealing with, whether you've been diagnosed with PCOS or not. A lot of um, the sexual health concerns uh, that people are faced with today ha have to do with insulin resistance. So in every single one of my videos, Every single time I come and talk to you about a particular um, way of eating, you know, a particular fasting schedule or elimination diet, please remember that I'm always, always, always focusing on the same thing. My five pillars when I talk to you, I'm always talking about how to lower insulin in people with insulin resistance, okay? So I hope this makes sense, particularly today when I'm talking about such a hot topic like dairy, okay? And I am never here to categorize foods as good or bad, not even whether they're low carb or high carb, and definitely not on low calorie, high calorie. I am only talking about how different foods will impact your insulin production, okay? How they may impact your cravings how they may impact your fasting and always as it relates to your insulin production and your reversal of insulin resistance. So when I'm talking about dairy in, in, and I know some of you might ask me and that's okay. I will answer, you know, whether dairy is more inflammatory or whether dairy is good for you or bad for you, or people should have dairy or not have dairy. I'm always going to be talking to you and referencing very often my food pyramid. Okay. And my food pyramid is one of the many resources in our fasting method program in the different courses and the different master classes. Really, it's about categorizing foods according to their insulin production. Now, this may or may not make sense to you. It may be familiar to you. You may even look this up, an insulin index. It's very hard for us to put foods on an insulin index. There is no insulin index per se, uh, but we do have a glycemic index. And when you hear me talk about insulin, or an insulin index, you may think of uh, glucose or glycemic index, but it is not the same thing. Even though insulin and glucose impact each other, right? They have a very dependent relationship. It's not the same thing, okay? When I talk about insulin, I'm talking about this hormone that we produce. And I'm not gonna spend too, too much time talking about insulin today, but I believe that my next video that I'm gonna 
uh, do here for you guys. I'm going to talk uh, maybe a little bit more about insulin and insulin resistance and all the different insulin resistant conditions and why they're all related. Okay. But today I just want it to make sense to you that because if you have a CGM, if you're somebody who checks your blood sugars, you may wonder why I'm talking so much about dairy, particularly because if you do have a CGM or, or a glucometer, if you're used to checking your blood sugars, you may notice that dairy, in fact, doesn't have a significant impact on your blood sugars. At least some dairy doesn't, like cream and cheese. Milk is a little bit different. Milk will for sure have a glycemic, a higher glycemic index because milk has lactose and lactose is a sugar. So of course sugar is going to have a higher glycemic index. When I'm talking about dairy, I'm talking more to the people that probably have chosen to do more of a low carb diet. And so when people switch to a low carb diet, two of the foods that they usually end up uh, eating more of is dairy and nuts because they're uh, part of the low carb foods. And so, and they're very, uh, very satiating. They're very appetizing. So it may be a food that you're finding yourself having a lot of. So if it's working for you, great. I think this video ends here for you. But if you're having trouble with either your fasting or your diet or lowering your blood sugars or losing weight while following a low carb and intermittent fasting lifestyle, I think this video might be of great interest to you because there might be something that you're not considering, which is the insulin production that some dairy products may have in some people. And the reason for this, again, is not because it raises your blood sugar, therefore triggering an insulin response. And of course, higher insulin is gonna create more um, fat storage and, and eventually insulin resistance and raising your blood sugars the next day, particularly. But this is not the reason. It's not the glycemic index. It's not the glucose. It's not the sugar like in the milk. Dairy products such as uh, cream and cheese, which have a lower um, carb content and a lower glycemic index end up in some people, particularly if you're more insulin resistant, they end up creating a much higher insulin response because of something that's called the incretin effect. And the incretin effect is the fact that our body increases its insulin production, particularly for proteins. So all proteins will have this incretin and it will create this higher insulin response, not because of the blood sugars, but because a, a production that's the receptors in your stomach that respond to this effect, okay? And so it's a, a bit of a twofold thing. It's an important thing here. Protein is very satiating. Protein is necessary. We all have a protein requirement, but some proteins will have a higher insulin production than others, not because of their glycemic index, or their glucose, the blood sugar, but because of this particular effect uh, that is outside of the blood sugar that will create this higher insulin response. In dairy is unfortunately something that will have an insulin response in some people as high as sugar because of this effect. So what do we do? This is very good information because if you're stuck and don't understand why you're stuck, you may be missing this one key piece of information, which is that for a period of time, particularly while you are uh, going through sort of your therapeutic journey, trying to reverse your, your um, insulin resistant conditions such as diabetes, obesity, PCOS, you, uh, dairy may not be serving you and you may be better off avoiding dairy and eliminating dairy. Now, this may leave you with the question of, well, if I can't have dairy, then what can I have on a low carb? Um, intermittent fasting lifestyle. And of course, there's a whole bunch of other foods that we can focus on, more satiating, rich, nourishing, that will have a much lower insulin response. And I talk quite a bit about this when I talk about uh, fat fasting and, and, other, and other things, okay? Uh, eventually, I would love to share with you my food pyramid and sort of explain to you uh, what some of the, um, what my, my dietary recommendations are. But for now, I'd like to leave you with this key piece of information to hopefully help you understand why your body may be reacting the way that it is, particularly if you have switched to a lower carb uh, diet and that is richer in dairy, okay? So even though uh, I've said this to you, I think that a lot of people do very, very well by recognizing, and this goes back to my first pillar, every time that I talk about 
TRE, time restricted eating. A reminder that this is the Beyonce of the show, the epitome of intermittent fasting. This key piece of information about dairy may be solved, or may you may be able to solve your conundrum if you just realize that all proteins, really all foods, will have an insulin response. Some foods will have a higher uh, insulin response than others, but for many of us, if we restrict dairy to our meals, so instead of eliminating it completely, you may be one of the uh, lucky uh, group of us that can actually bring the dairy, like the cream in your coffee, into your meals, into your TRE meals, as opposed to having it in between meals. And I'll explain this in another video, but there's this critical importance of having that dip in insulin production in between meals. And so if we recognize that, for example, cream in your coffee, which is a uh, food that has a very low glycemic index and low carb content, but still a higher um, insulin uh, production, then if we restrict and bring the cream into your meals, as opposed to in your coffee between your meals, you may still be allowing that drop in insulin in between meals that we are looking for when trying to reverse insulin resistance and um, all the expressions of insulin resistance such as diabetes, obesity, and PCOS and the like, okay? I hope this was uh, useful and I will leave in the resources the link to my blog post if you're interested in reading a little bit more about why dairy may have an insulin response as high as sugar. I'll also leave some references to some of the articles written by Megan and Dr. Fun on this particular topic. Uh, one in particular that you may be interested in reading is, is dairy fattening? And I'll leave another one about the insulin index so that this becomes more clear, also written by Dr. Tracy Fun. Okay, everyone, talk to you soon. Bye.